Hello, Ariana here from Scale and Simplify. In this video, I want to share some tips and tricks for Kartra's page builder, doing things more efficiently, and getting around some of the weird things that sometimes happen in the page builder. Um, or things that I just have been asked about that can be finicky at times and how to sort of work around that. So this is not going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial of how to create pages. This is assuming that you have sort of at least explored it to some extent and know how to add different sections and all of that. I'm just going to run through a series of tips. Um, I am going to start by clicking to add a page start starting from scratch because I want to start by mentioning a couple of things about templates. So um, you might have heard me talk about creating as best practice, creating a wireframe or designing your page actually outside of Kartra using Canva to just get the design dialed in so you can know what you want it to look like before you get into Kartra and start fiddling with the page builder. And so with that in mind, templates won't necessarily work for you. They can help you though if it's closely matched to how you want it designed or you can come in here and preview some of these for inspiration. Um, if there's a template that you think matches really closely with the content that you're using and you can just for the most part like swap out the content um, and the sections sort of mirror what you want on your whatever page you're building, um, then it's good to use a template. Sometimes um, it and you end up doing more work than, than you think um, with the template if the thing that you are selecting does not really match the, the content that you're creating. So it all just, um, it depends. You can go about it different ways. Something that um, I like to do is use section templates rather than entire page templates a lot of the time. So I'm just gonna start a blank page and show you what I mean by that. So Kartra's builder, you've got different layers. Section is the outermost layer of content and then you go inwards with columns and um, further in to components. And so when you click to add a section, you've got all of these different presets that they have and so if you've designed your page already or somebody's designed it you can find something that has a similar structure um, to help you work off of that so I'm just gonna pop in a couple um, of things just as an example okay you can also add a empty section like that um, and then, you know, if you're editing this for yourself and you want to be able to use it on a different page, maybe it's your about section or something that um, repeats itself elsewhere, you can click on the cogs here and click the heart to favorite, favorite it. And then when you're coming in to add a section under favorites here in the menu at the top, you're going to have those saved in here to use throughout your Kartra account. So whatever page you're in, those will be available for you to reuse. Okay, now I'm going to talk about some content editing tips. Before I go to that though, let's just chat about saving. So I recommend that you click on save progress often. Um, you don't have to publish it each time. You can just hit save progress. Um, there is the auto save feature. I don't recommend using it um, because it could lead to a glitch and having some unintentional saving or not saving in the way that you intended it to be done. Especially um, if you have somebody else working in your account too, um, there could be some like version confusion. Um, and so I like to keep this off and just remember to manually save um, often. Okay, so some content editing tips um, just for fonts and stuff like that. Uh, one thing I want to show you is here under styles, if you go to components, you can select a font size um, that will be used throughout the page. Now, something to keep in mind is that it will change everything. 
And by that, I mean, you see here, we've got like different font um, types and sizes for the header and for the paragraph font. If you come in here and let's say you wanna use this font, it's going to change everything. Okay, so use that if this makes sense for you to be able to do it. Um, if you wanna change everything to the same font and then maybe you can go back and adjust the, the headlines. Um, but the other way to do it is just to go through each one separately. Okay, now when it comes to, you know, maybe you've formatted this and now you wanna add text or you wanna change it. Um, oftentimes what will happen is if you, um, let's see, it just did it now, but it, <laughs> sometimes you'll paste it and it will revert to um, another default text that you have there. Um, or let's say that you change this to open songs and now, we pasted this, this is just random text that I pulled from somewhere. It's pasting it as a different font, even though you want it to take on the font of that you've already set for that text box. What you can do is if you hit Control, Shift, and V, or Control, Command, V, if you're on Mac, um, it should, let me just try that again. There we go, okay? So you have to do it like within the text, if that makes sense. So if I hit space and do it, um, copying it from somewhere else, um, it wouldn't work. So just do it like within the existing text and then it can paste it in that same formatting. All right, now let's talk about colors. Um, so you can set a color palette and the way that you would do this is when you're in, when you come in to um, edit any colors for like backgrounds, buttons or anything like that, um, you're going to see this and then you can click to create a palette. Um, and then it's going to, I've got different ones here. You, the way to add to a palette is like, you're gonna select your color, let's say it's orange. Once you've selected the color that you want and you're in the palette that you have created, you can just hit the plus and it will add it to there now. Okay. You can edit the colors to remove what was added. or you can rename it if you wish. Okay, and when you're adding a new one, you're just gonna punch in the name and then it will be added here. So this is really helpful to um, stay consistent with your brand coloring and so you're not having to grab the color all the time. Now, the place where that is not available is in the text editor, unfortunately. And so, you do need to have your colors saved because if you wanted to change the color of the text, as you can see here, there's no color palette saved there. One way to get around this is this tool um, that a lot of people use, um, kpowertools.com. I'm not an affiliate or anything. This is just, <laughs> just sharing because it's a great tool. Um, they have various different solutions here, but if you, um, get this plugin, you'll see that you'll be able to do various different things that are not native to Kartra, and among those is having color palettes for fonts as well. Okay, now I want to talk about padding, creating spacing in between things. I'm not sure why this box is not going away. Okay, so there are different levels where you can create spacing and then depending on the kind of look that you want, you're going to add the padding at those different levels. So let me show you what I mean. So here, if you wanted to reduce or increase the margins that are around this particular text box, the orange that's highlighted here, you would come into those settings and do that. So now we can see, even though here it's just five points above and below, there's still a whole bunch of space above it. That means that this element here has spacing and we can see it has uh, 30 points. So I'm going to put five just to demonstrate um, how you would tighten up that space. Now, if you click here to turn columns on, 
You can also edit the padding in this column. So throughout here, left, right, bottom, um, or here, and this is the outermost. So let's say that you wanted to sort of create space above and below this photo, this whole section here, you could increase the padding, and now it's increasing it above and below this outermost um, green section. Um, and that's super helpful too to know, especially if you're working off of templates. Sometimes it's hard to just at a glance, you're not really sure where the spacing is coming from. If you want to adjust it, just know that you can check at all different layers um, of these components and then you can find where that is that you want to adjust it. All right, a couple more tips. One is, I'm actually gonna build it out here to show you. So. Sometimes you have kind of like this where there's, you know, you've got text on the side and then an image on the right hand side. And you might be struggling to match it up so that that image is always like on different screen sizes and all of that is, you know, aligned with the text that you have. So what I like to do is I'm just going to create a two column section here. Okay, and then we're going to put some text on one side. Okay, and then instead of dropping the actual like a component with an image on the right side here, I'm going to come in here, go to the blue section of the right hand column, so this, and then upload an image. Okay, now it seems to be going through some sort of glitch at the moment. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not able to, to show in this video at this time. Um, but what happens is then that image becomes, takes up this whole right hand space. And if you add or delete the text, the image will also sort of, you know, the sizing of the image will coincide with that. It can never be smaller or bigger than the column on the left. Okay, so something to play around with next time you're wanting to have an image next to some text. Okay, and then my final piece of advice is related to mobile view. Now, once you've done what well, you've finished building your entire page, I recommend that you look at mobile view um, and consider which sections might need to be rebuilt in mobile. Now, something to keep in mind is that the preview in here is not necessarily 100% the way that it will look on your phone. So I always recommend publishing the page and then actually opening it up on your phone to preview it in there and see if there's anything else funny going on. Um, and then what you would do is, let's say you want this, the header to be different on mobile, you're going to come in here, you're going to duplicate it. Okay, so now we've got two. You're going to take the first one, edit, hide. So I'm going to select this first one to hide it on mobile and tablet. So this one will appear only on desktop. And then I'm going to go to the second one and I'm going to hide it on desktop, the reverse, right? Hit apply. Now it's no longer here, but if I go into mobile, now I can switch things up um, on this version. And let's say that maybe, you know, I want to reverse this um, or you can delete it and just build a fresh one that is just built for mobile where maybe you know the picture is in the background or something and it's more friendly for a mobile viewer um, it does you know for the most part make adjustments throughout for mobile but there are certain things particularly when it comes to the structure of a section that certain structures like this one for example just don't really work on mobile um, and so you need to rebuild it in there 
All right, so those are some of my tips for using the page builder. Hopefully these save you some time and headache.